good morning it is as you can see an absolutely beautiful smoky mountains foggy morning and uh i couldn't be happier i know it's july the end of july but it is a nice cool like 58 60 degrees right now it's really humid but it feels really good it rained all night last night just let up maybe around daybreak and uh I thought it'd be a great time to come out and take a walk. It's my favorite kind of weather. And uh, I'm going to get dripped on walking under trees, but that's okay. I don't mind. I hope you guys all had a good weekend, and I hope you enjoyed your week last week. I sure did. I got to stream about one of my favorite old schlocky horror movies over on Chloe's channel, Proper Horror Show. I did that instead of Empire of Lies last week because I wanted a break from the evil cancer of the world and having to think about it. And uh, it felt pretty good. It felt pretty good to, uh, to take a, a step away from that. And there's a car coming. I'm gonna have to pause for a moment. Okay, there it goes. Anyway, so I made a long recording last week where I was upset and I don't like feeling like the creative, fun person that my friends and especially my husband loved for years is dead. And, uh, well, it's been a week since I recorded that video, and I don't really feel any different about it. Now, there was a deluge of emails and PMs and texts, people checking on me. That was a county work truck going much faster than it should have been on this country road. Uh, it, Sorry about that very ugly edit. There's no way I can quickly, gently edit that one out. Anyway, uh, i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take... I don't want to be bothered by vehicles while we talk about something important, so we're going to go this way. We'll get back to what I was talking about here in a moment. I'm going to walk over here, and we are going to look at the pond. I know that this is just a drainage pond here for these wealthy people, but I think it's pretty, and I like looking at it. This is why I like rural Appalachian people, because even, even something as, as ugly and necessary as a drainage ditch pond, we try to cultivate and make look pretty. It says a lot about the people that live here, doesn't it? All right. Well, we're going to walk into the, into the trees here. We're going to go into this, uh, this unused lot uh, near this... Uh, ooh, almost dropped the phone near where this wealthy lady lives that I like. All right. So, last week, after making that video lamenting how I have changed for the worse, I got a deluge of emails, PMs, text messages, worrying about me, thinking that I might be suicidal or something like that. That's just not true. I am not depressed or suicidal. I am morning. I am bothered. I am upset because I've been trying to let go of being an obsessive, uh, driven person who is a warrior in this cause. And this is a nice spot. We're going to hang out here. This is quite nice. Let's see what we have over here. Is there any place for me to chill and sit in the woods? I don't know, but we're going to find one. This looks nice over here. Let's go poking in through here, see if we can find a spot to sit and talk a while. Okay, it's really wet, so there's probably not going to be any foxes or snakes out right now, which is fine. All right, where's a good spot for me to sit? Hmm. Maybe I don't need to sit at all. Maybe I can just lean against a tree. Let's go down here. Okay. How about, how about this? This looks good. I can just chill here. All right. Okay, this is nice. So, let me uh, move against this tree here. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to lean against this tree here. Oh, those are thorns. I better move that. All right. Okay. Oh, 
Those are thorns down there too. They got stuck in my pants. Well, that was clumsy and terrible. This was probably not very well thought through, but I like getting to stand here and hear the water drip. It's very soothing, and uh, I like sort of just raw, unkept nature. It makes me feel good. So, I'm not depressed or suicidal, guys. Like, last week I was expressing a mix of grief and mourning over what I've lost to this war. Yes, when I was in my 20s, I was a degenerate that did drugs and had easy sex with people. And yes, those of you who followed me for a long time, I was a massive degenerate in regards to sex, sex work, partying, that kind of thing. It's, uh, it's an ugly part of my past, like it is a lot of people my age. The 90s was a time of, hey, everybody be a selfish hedonist. Everybody be an edgy, selfish uh, hedonist that just, you know... God isn't real. Traditions all suck. Everybody just be the biggest degen you can. Find the biggest titty goth GF you can, etc., etc. Do all the drugs. Have all the sex. Do all the partying. That was sort of mainlined into me in the 90s via everything. Television and movies and MTV and radio and just everything, right? Like, it was the era of shock jocks. It was the era of, you know, late 90s and early aughts is when things sort of just went absolutely degen wild. And unfortunately, I'm a product of that time. But I got better. Uh, towards the end of my 20s, I started realizing that the choices I had made were not very healthy. And by the time I was in my early 30s, I started doing something about it. That was over a decade ago. And I eventually was able to pull myself away from selfish hedonism, thinking that I could make a family out of other degenerates and make a family worth having. I was flawed in that seeking. And... In feeling, in discovering what I did around Gamergate 2013, 2014, I became obsessed because I can't have children. I never wanted children. I'm not really religious, uh, even though I practice certain elements of Christianity now. I don't really believe in God. Uh, I, I have a very skeptical mind about everything. And that applies to religion and faith as well, and I don't think that I have the wiring to have what faith is. I've, I've sought it most of my life, don't have it, can't feel it, I'm probably going to die faithless. And that's sad. But that's, that's, not, really here, that's not really what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is I am not suicidal, I am not depressed. I am mourning how I have changed and how the creative elements, the joyous elements of myself have become a casualty to this war and me obsessing over how much we are lied to. I am lied to about everything. These lies affected me, okay? I got pulled into the arms of the transgender agenda. I got lied to and manipulated by different types of homosexuals in my teens and 20s. Their lies, their manipulations, were reinforced by things I was told by teachers in public school, by guidance counselors I had, by TV, by movies, by video games, by comic books, by shock jock uh, talk show hosts, by things that I heard on MTV. Society reinforced the lies that, that jealous, selfish, harmful people used to manipulate me and to get me to do things and join things and, and have talking points that I otherwise would have known better than. And being someone who is, I'm damaged, maybe even retarded, who knows, but I clearly, there's something wrong with me. I'm intersex, I don't understand human interaction naturally like a lot of people do. It doesn't come easy to me. I am also very high IQ, and this is not a flex, this is me telling you why it's difficult for me. I'm intersex, I don't intuit romance and sex and gender very naturally. I had to come to that, I had to build my own templates by reflections of others. I didn't really know who to be or why to be. And so, the different types of people that pulled me towards them were ones who told me those answers to fill that void. And when I went looking for ways to fix my broken, degenerate life in like between 2011 and 2014, who did I find? I found people that were either new atheists, I found people who were skeptics, 
Or worse, I found people who already had an agenda. They were people who wanted to push faux patriotism. It's also when I found the Occupy Wall Street people. And some of them I think are still pretty good people. It's when I found Tim Pool. It's when I found, um, oh, what's another big name you guys would know? Uh, Stefan Molyneux. It's where I found Sam Harris. And then a few years later, after I was already entrenched in the culture war, I found Jordan Peterson. What a tragedy he turned out to be. So, my point is, being confused, but having a, a, a high intellect, being a misfit that can't have a family, but feeling like I should have a family, led me to making a lot of choices between like 2008 and 2015. I wish I could go back and undo. Because I thought that I could change the degenerates. I thought that the people that I knew and liked, whether they be homosexual or transgender or just rabid, um, selfish atheists, I thought that I could change them. And that is my version of the dude sees a crazy hot chick and says, I can fix her, right? Like, that's my tragic version of that. And, of course, it didn't end well. The things I tried to build with people fell through. Uh, sometimes my own shortcomings, but usually not. Usually the shortcomings of these people that, that were not suited to build the kind of life and to be the kind of partner or to do the role in life that I wanted to create. I wanted to create a family from people that were not cut out for it. That was a flaw of mine. And another flaw of mine was letting myself become obsessed and letting this war become my own. This is not my war. The only war that is mine is the war on the white race because I'm inescapably white. But I, I'm not someone who can have children. I'm not someone who, in my opinion, should even be around children. Despite me saying based things, and having based takes that parents of, let's call it a traditional or correct mindset, would appreciate. I am naturally gender bent. I am a feminine male intersex eunuch person. I don't want to be around children at all. Because even me being around them and their parents saying, yeah, this is Yiz, she's gender messed up, but she's okay, that might plant a bad seed that the anti-white agenda can then twist or flip in a child's mind later when they're older. So I just keep myself away from kids entirely. And it's another reason why I don't really like going to church because I sort of feel like an imposter, like, like a parasite. Because I can't have faith. I've tried since I was a child. It just doesn't take. I just can't believe. And so for me, I feel like going to church and trying to be involved with deeply devout religious people like my mother, it's like I'm just being a pretender. It's like I'm fake, and it makes me feel like that's an ugly thing that I shouldn't be a part of. So that's why I opted. I'm glad that my mother decided to stop going to her church when that cancerous anti-white schmuck took over. And now I just sort of have church with her privately at home, which I like better, but I think she misses it. But she's old, and she's glad she doesn't have to leave the house anymore. But anyway, so my point is with all of this, I, between being a child in the 80s and 90s and up to being an adult all the way to the beginning of the second Obama administration, right, in like 2012, that like 20-year period of my life, I was very creative and joyous and happy. I made things. I wrote stories like I talked about last week. And then all of that started to evaporate and go away. Between like 28 and 33 years old for me, which was during the second Obama administration, like 2012, no, wait, no, no, that was the first Obama administration for me. I'm 44, almost 45. So anyway, in my late 20s to, to, to mid 30s during the Obama years, I sort of became obsessed with the Gamergate culture war stuff, trying to figure out what was real and what wasn't. And that broke me. I've never come back from that. I stopped feeling like anything, any impulse that I had was genuine because of how warped I am. Because of knowing myself and my husband telling me how I am and how I've been for the last 20 years. Telling me that, look, he is, 
you are already prone to mimic, to mirror the behavior of others, to know how to be. And the more that you're around these people that are more and more politically and culturally radical, the more you become like them. And I don't like that. And I did it anyway. And I wish I hadn't have. I wish that I, wish that I never would have gone down this path because I don't know who to be and I don't know who I am other than I know that the genuine things I used to love are dead and gone. And I don't know if I can ever get them back. And I don't know how to proceed, really, because I've spent... Like, my mind is very hyperactive. Extremely hyperactive. Like I said, I, I'm, I have untreated ADHD. My mind is just... All day long. And it used to chew on fantasy and science fiction. It used to chew on the novels I read. It used to chew on interesting movies and TV shows. And the thousands of pages of things I have written for game settings and interesting characters. And all of the games and, and the things I used to run for people. I used to run d and I used to run Shadowrun. I used to run Battletech, Mech Warrior, War Machine. All these other tabletop games. That's what my hyperactive brrr, mind used to chew on all the time. But starting around Gamergate, all of that evaporated away, and my mind just latches on to culture war stuff. Everything. And my mind can't let it go, and it just chews on it all the time, all day long, thinking about conspiracies and government lies and, and who's got what agenda and, you know, who, what pie is whose hand in. And what have I been told in my history books growing up is a lie. What about, you know... All the crazy rabbit holes I've been down of moon landing was fake and JFK assassination this and Holocaust bullshit and all this other stuff. Like, my mind can't let that go now. It's been years. Years since I've gone down any of these conspiracy theory truth or rabbit holes. Years. And my mind still can't let it go. That is what has replaced my identity and my mind. I'm not creative anymore. I'm not joyous anymore. I'm not imaginative anymore. Like I used to be. And that is what I mourn. I don't know if I can ever get that back. Sort of like, uh, I've never been to like mourning grief counseling, but I know it's a thing where like they tell people, you know, your husband, your father, your wife, your mother, whatever is dead and gone. You have to deal with that. You have to grieve and get over it and move on. That's where I am with myself now. And it makes me sick because I have tried to have a fruitful conversation with my husband multiple times in the last year. I don't even reveal my power level, so to speak. I just try to talk to him about how obsessing over all of the lies and science and media and history affect me. And he tries to assuage my fears by saying that I'm wrong. That I'm wrong. That things aren't full of lies and, ca and cancerous misdirection and political agenda and propaganda. And that our history isn't as fake as I think. And it makes me want to reject him. But I shouldn't. Because he's a good man who cares about me. His family is good. He has a sister and a, and a father who like me. I don't... But my, my gut impulse is still... This husband, my best friend... Now keep in mind, I'm not in a traditional relationship. There's no kissing or romance or sex or anything. I call it, we call each other husband and wife because we're just best friends that don't want sex and kids and we love each other and live together. So, my best friend, who knows me better than anyone else in the world, has not followed me on this journey of radicalization and rejecting the lies of society. And he tries to assuage me by pulling me back into that. And I don't know how to respond to that. Because, well, I do know how to respond to it. And let me tell you what I told him. I said, after a lot of crying and a lot of frustration, and both of us being upset, I said, you know how I do religious stuff with my mother, and I have taken on Christian religious practices to help me, even though I don't believe, I operate as if it's all true. I said, to have a life with you, to have a normal life, I can do the same thing about all of this conspiracy culture war stuff. I can try 
to pretend that the media isn't all lies and that my personal history of being an American and all of this war stuff is mostly not lies. I can try to do that. And so for the last month and a half to two months since I told him that, I've been trying to do that and I can't. I can't. I can't look at commercials. I, I can't just listen to the news. I can't look at television or talk to normal people about normal people things without inherently immediately rejecting it all as lies and propaganda and manipulation and the product of someone's narrative. I can't do that. I have a problem. I am obsessed. And I don't know how to fix it. And not only has it made me a joyless wretch, it is also destroying my ability to have any type of healthy human connection. And I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to unlearn or to unsee all the things I've read and seen and absorbed on the internet for the last 10 years. I don't know how to put this down. I don't know how to try to be the person that I was that is probably dead. But that's what I yearn for. And so, I'm not suicidal. I'm not depressed, really. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. I'm joyless. And I don't have anyone in my personal, private life who supports any of the changes that I have made to myself in the last 10 or 11 years of being this, this radicalized warrior. They wish I wasn't. Especially my husband. I have a very strained relationship with him now. And he's really the only bedrock I have in my life. And he has not followed me on this path, and he wishes that I hadn't been on it. And so, he wants me to be like I was 15 years ago. But I don't think I can. He wants me to move away from all of this culture war, everything is lies, everything is narrative, the culture is not what it seems, anti-white narrative stuff. He hates me talking about that. He's told me he never wants me to hear he never wants to hear me bring that shit up again ever. And this week he told me that he has been closer to breaking things off with me and telling me to get out of his life than he's ever been before. Whenever I reveal to him that it's this is something so critical to me that I don't think I'll ever be able to let it go and it's permanently who I am. He didn't sleep at all one night this week. He stayed up all night while I slept brooding and pacing and thinking. And when I woke up, he had a long heart-to-heart -heart with me and said that I have to change or it's going to destroy my relationship with him and he's going to have to ask me to not be in his life anymore. So that's where we're at. That's where I'm at with all of this. Is I can't work a normal job. I can't talk to normal people. I can't have joy. I don't create. I don't write. I, I don't even have the mental capacity to think about the things that used to bring me joy because I'm obsessed with this fucking war. And I can't, my mind can't stop. And I'm trying my absolute best to put this stuff down, but it's what I do for a living now. And so, there was also talk this week with my husband about maybe me changing the kind of content that I make. Maybe I should just cover movies and video games. Maybe I should do the things I'm doing, but talk about it, talk about it in a more tepid, less radical, less extreme way. Maybe that could help. So, I'm recording this Monday morning. Tonight, on my Monday Discordant Dragons, I'm going to do my best to have more tepid topics and more tepid guests. And I'm going to see how it feels. I'm going to see how it goes. I'm going to see if, if the audience responds and if they like it. But, I'll tell you this right now. My stomach has been in knots for weeks. I'm sick. I don't eat well. I don't sleep well. Because... I want, I want to wake up not full of anxiety, rage, and misery. I have to let all of this go. I have to, for my own sanity and my own health. And I don't know how. I don't know if I can, and that bothers me. So, again, not suicidal here, not depressed, frustrated, sad, angry, mourning, grief. That's where I'm at, and I want to fix myself. I don't want to give up. I don't want to go out with a bang with some kind of stupid terroristic gesture. I don't want to, to kill myself. I'm not there, okay guys? I'm not there. Probably won't ever be. 
I've beaten those demons. I conquered those demons years ago. The Go Free Method helped a lot with that. And so, I'm here to tell you, I don't know where my future as a content creator is going. I like doing it. I just don't know what the focus of my content is going to be or what I'm going to be like months from now. I don't know. I don't know what's coming down the road for me and I'll worry about it. So, this video has been really long. Uh, it's probably at least 30 minutes. I don't know. It feels like I've talked forever. But this stuff needed to be said. I, I want it to be here, not just for you guys, but so I can come back and listen to this. Anyway, it is starting to rain, so I'm going to get really soaked if I stay out here too long, so I need to head back. I've got about another 10-minute walk to get back. I love you guys. Thank you for being here with me all these years, and uh, hopefully I'll be here for years to come, and uh, hopefully I can fix myself and change my mind and let go of this stuff so I can actually have some me again about fun, happy, creative things instead of just this war 24-7. That's what I need. Pray for me that I can get to that point. I'll see you guys uh, Thursday night. Have a great week, everybody. God bless.